something is in constant motion. Could it be a microorganism? No. So then, what exactly is this mysterious entity? Homo sapiens. Yes, you heard that right. It shares 100% of the human genome. Biologically speaking, it is human. And no, there's been no genetic editing or artificial manipulation involved. But wait, how can a life form with a genome completely identical to humans take on such a form? Scientists explain that this phenomenon becomes possible when life enters a third state, a state that transcends the boundary between life and death. In other words, organisms with the Homo sapiens genome can transform into multicellular life forms. Typically, when an organism dies, its organs and tissues shut down, gradually. Meaning, cells can survive for some time after death. For example, some human brain cells can survive for over four hours without oxygen. But what if, just what if, we provide these cells with the right environment, nutrients, and oxygen to keep them alive? To investigate, scientists harvested skin cells from frogs and cultured them in a lab. The results? Astonishing. The frog cells adapted to the new environment and began to transform into multicellular life forms. They could move independently in straight lines or circles. Even more surprising, they grouped together to form larger, multicellular organisms. And despite these dramatic transformations, their genome remained 100% identical to that of the original frog. Now consider this. What happens if we use human cells? To answer this, scientists experimented with lung cells from a deceased human. And here's where it gets even more intriguing. These human cells, much like the frog cells, exhibited an ability to self-move and transformed into autonomous multicellular organisms. Their genome, still 100% human. Even more extraordinary, they develop the capacity to heal damaged tissues on their own. So, what exactly are these entities? Scientists call them anthrobots. Each one measures 30 to 500 micrometers in diameter and can survive for up to two months. But here's the truly fascinating part. Anthrobots can influence other cells. In one experiment, researchers placed anthrobots on a flat layer of human neural cells, damaged by a scratch. What happened next was incredible. The anthrobots helped the neurons regenerate across the gap. And no, this wasn't simply because they provided a passive bridge. Inert polysaccharide gels couldn't achieve the same effect. What if we could fully understand and control this third state of life. We could create bio-robots on demand. Picture this, a swarm of robots made entirely from your own cells. They could be deployed inside your body, sent to your brain to remove a tumor. Because they're made from your cells, your body wouldn't reject them. They could even swim through your bloodstream, cleaning arterial plaque as they go. Now, imagine using cells from other organs, like neurons or blood vessels. These cells could communicate, forming tissues that might eventually build entire organs. And ultimately, they could join together to recreate us. But here lies the ethical dilemma. What if these robots develop consciousness? What if they gain the ability to feel? Who will protect their rights? And. What happens if this technology succeeds, but falls into the wrong hands? Scientists acknowledge that this is uncharted territory. In fact, they stress the need to have these conversations now, early in the development of such a transformative technology.